I edit your audio. Welcome back to another video in the series. I know it's been a little while. It's actually, it's been a long while. And I thought it'd be time that we get another video in this series going. If you're not familiar with it, this is where you guys send in your audio files or your video with audio. And then I show you how I would edit those audio files to make them sound the best that we can. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a small clip from a viewer whose name is Karsten. And he runs a company called Mind Space X where they do different kinds of training. I believe it's for pilots. So I'll link up his stuff below. You can check that out. But here is what the raw audio, the raw clip sounds like that he had sent me that we're going to be taking a look at. When it comes to the all Indian operative, two Indian operated distances, they remain unchanged from dry runway. You may think right now, well, if I have a wet or contaminated runway where I have snow or slush, and surely that's going to change the distances takeoff. Not exactly. What changes is the amount of weight you can take off with given those contaminated conditions. So that's the raw audio. Now here's what it would sound like if I went through and did my typical audio process and worked on this clip a little bit. Here's what it's going to sound like by the time we get done with this video. When it comes to the all engine operative, two engine operated distances, they remain unchanged from dry runway. You may think right now, well, if I have a wet or contaminated runway where I have snow or slush, and surely that's going to change the distances for takeoff. Not exactly. What changes is the amount of weight you can take off with given those contaminated conditions. Let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and we're going to show you exactly step by step the things that I did to this clip to make it sound better and more professional. So as we jump into Resolve here, we have two clips here that uh, he sent me to take a look at. The first one is just the raw audio that you heard in the beginning of the video there. But we also have another clip where he tried to apply some EQ to it and we're going to take a listen to that and then we can see how that did. But we'll be editing the raw audio clip just to see what we can do with it. Now I am starting off in the edit tab here since there is video associated with this clip. Starting off in the edit tab down here, but then we're gonna be jumping into Fairlight where we've got more access to all the tools. So before we get started, I do have some studio monitors set up here. You might've seen in the first shot, but when I'm editing audio and I really wanna hear stuff, I like to use a good pair of headphones. These are Sony MDR V6s. They don't make these anymore. These are like 20 years old and these things are awesome. They still kick butt, but they make, uh, I think 7506 or something, MDR 7506. I don't know. But the point is have some decent headphones or some good speakers to listen to your audio on because if you're using junky laptop speakers, it's gonna be hard to work with that audio. I'm not saying it can't be done, but it's gonna be easier if you got some good headphones. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw these guys on and let's jump into Resolve and take a listen at the raw audio here in this first clip and see what we notice right off the bat. When it comes to the all engine operative, two engine operated distances, they remain. Okay, so right off the bat, I notice I hear kind of some background noise, a little hissing, popping kind of thing going on there. I notice some harsh S sounds, so we want to try and take care of that. And I think it could probably just use a little overall EQ to help clean things up a little bit. Now, just a quick word about the equipment that he's using here. He said that he's actually using some uh, decent equipment here. He's using a Sennheiser MKE 600 microphone, which is actually the microphone that I use to record 95% of all my videos. I have it right down here off frame, you can't see it. But that's what I use for most of my videos. So I know the microphone is top notch. It's a great quality microphone and you should be getting some good audio out of it. So this Sennheiser microphone is a XLR microphone. You do need to have an audio interface or have it plugged into some kind of interface to get it into your computer. So I'm not so sure of his whole setup there, um, but if it's you know decent equipment, like you said, you should be able to get a great recording out of it. So let's take a quick listen at the clip where he adjusted the EQ a little bit. Tell me what you think about that. Comment below, and I'm going to let you know my thoughts in a second here. Let's listen in. When it comes to the all engine operative, two engine operated distances. Okay, now comparing the two back to back. The amount of weight you can take off with, given those can take off with, given those content. So it sounds like the bass was boosted up a little bit. It almost honestly sounds a little bit muddier to me. It's a little bit harder to understand. It's not quite as crisp and as clear 
using whatever the EQ was that he applied there. All right, let's get to work here on this clip. The first thing that I want to do, we can do in the edit tab here, or you can do it in Fairlight. I want to adjust my levels. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my mixer right here because I want to be able to see my meters and make sure that I'm getting some good levels for my audio clip here. Adjust my screen just a little bit here, make my meter a little bigger. So we're just going to be using this first clip with the raw audio. Let's watch our meter here and see where the levels fall. When it comes to the all Indian operative, two Indian. All right, so it looks like we're coming in like minus 15, minus 16, minus 17 dB there. I want that to be closer to minus 10 dB. So I'm gonna just grab it right here and I'm just gonna boost up that volume while I watch that meter and I play back my clip here. So I can kind of get it a little bit closer to right here, that minus 10 dB. So let's go ahead and do that. All Indian operative, two Indian operated distances. They remain unchanged from dry runway. You may think right now, well, if I have a wet or okay. okay, I think that's pretty good. Now again, I might you know go a little more in detail with it, but for now, this is kind of how we're going to approach this. I think this is pretty good. I know some of you might say, hey, it did go into the red with the meters a little bit. Can't do that. It's all right. Don't worry about it. We're going to apply a little bit of compression that'll help that. But it's actually all right if it goes into the red a little bit. It doesn't mean you're peaking. It's only once you get above that zero dB that you're actually peaking. So keep that in mind. So now that we've got some decent levels set here, we're going to jump over into Fairlight so then we can continue to work with our audio. Jumping into Fairlight, the musical notes down here at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and make my track a little bit bigger here. I'm just going to mute the track that I'm not using. And now the process that I like to use to edit audio is first, I want to set my levels. I want to make sure I got good levels coming in that I've got a good signal to work with. And really, it starts with your recording. So you want to do the best you can getting good levels recording. But once we get in Resolve, set our levels. Let's get some good levels. Number two. Number two. Number two, number two, I want to work with some EQ because I like to route my audio with good levels into the EQ first. And then we're going to follow up third by going into the dynamics where we can apply a little compression and get rid of a little bit of that background noise. And then we go into our effects and we apply effects to our good, clean, uh, processed audio. So starting out with our EQ, what I like to do is loop my clip so it'll just keep playing back over and over again so that I can adjust the EQ and not have to start and stop and start and stop. In order to do that, I want to select this guy right here, which is my range selection mode. I'm going to go ahead and select my clip. And then I'm going to come up here and in my toolbar, I'm going to turn on the loop. So now that we have our range selected, we want this to loop back and forth and just continuously play so we can adjust our EQ. In order to do that, you want to use option forward slash or alt forward slash on a PC. And then that's going to loop the range that we just selected. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to start working with the EQ here and see what we can find. So to find the EQ, you want to make sure you've got your mixer open and you should see it right here, EQ. To open the EQ all the way, you're just going to double click on it. Now, if you don't see the EQ for some reason, you could try coming to these three dots right here and then make sure that EQ is turned on right down here. And if you still can't see, use your middle mouse wheel to kind of scroll up and down here and you should be able to find it. So let's go ahead and open up our EQ and we're going to loop the playback here for this clip using option forward slash for me, maybe alt forward slash for you. And let's play with the EQ a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do with the EQ is apply a high pass filter, which means I'm going to take out any of the low end muddy frequencies. So in order to do that, I can actually do it before I even start playing. I'm going to set my band one around 120 uh, hertz here. The next thing I like to do that we can also do before we even start listening to the clip here is turn on band six and we want to add a low pass filter. So this is just going to cut out a lot of the high end frequencies, maybe some hissing, some noise that we don't want. Just going to cut that out because for dialogue, we don't really need that. So let's go ahead. I'm going to turn that on and I'm just going to roll it back a little bit. We'll put it around 16K, close enough, good enough. So let's go ahead and start our playback. I'm going to use option forward slash, or forward slash for you maybe, if you're on a PC. And I'm going to grab my point number four, and I'm going to boost it up. And you can use your middle mouse wheel to change the Q factor, which is how far wide open or how close you know the the uh, point is here which means it's going to affect more frequencies if it's wide it's going to affect less frequencies if it's narrow so i'm going to make it pretty narrow i'm going to just going to boost it up and i'm going to sweep back and forth and i'm going to listen for harsh 
frequencies. So harsh is anything that doesn't sound good. It could sound nasally. It could sound uh, distorted. You're going to see when we hit those spots. You'll you'll hear it right away. So I know that for vocals, generally between the 1,000 and 2,000 range, you're going to have probably two points, somewhere a little below 1,000 and somewhere around two, that we're going to want to drop out a little EQ. Most microphones can use a little EQ drop in that, that area just to help clean up the vocal a little bit. So let's go ahead and play through, listen in, and uh, see what we can do here. When it comes to the all Indian operative, two Indian operated distances, they remain unchanged from dry runway. Now you may think right now, well, if I have a wet or contaminated runway where I have snow or slush, and surely that's gonna change the distances for takeoff. Not exactly. Okay, so we heard it was a little harsh there. It kinda, it sounded bad in my headphones. Hopefully you guys heard it on your end. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with 0.5 here. And I'm going to look around that 2,000 kilohertz range, or 2,000, 2K range. I always get all messed up. People say I say 2,000, then I say kilohertz, which is kilohertz is thousands. You guys know what I mean. The 2K, the 2K right here. So I want to change my point type right here to this guy, the bell curve here. So that way I can bring it up and change it like this, however I need to. So I'm going to play through. I'm going to do the same thing with point three and point two, and then uh, give it a listen here, and let's see what we could find. When it comes to the all Indian operative, two Indian operated distances, they remain unchanged from dry runway. Now you may think right now, well, if I have a wet or contaminated runway where I have snow yeah. or slush, and surely that's gonna change the distances for takeoff. When it comes to the all Indian operative, two Indian operated distances, they remain unchanged from dry runway. Now you may think right now, well, if I have a wet or contaminated runway where I have snow or slush, and surely that's gonna change the distances for takeoff. Not exactly. What changes is the amount. Okay, so could you hear those harsh frequencies around that 0 0.5 and uh, the point number three? So 0 0.5 is around two and a half kilohertz or whatever, about 2.4 K. And depending on somebody's voice, obviously people's voices have different, you know, uh, frequency ranges. You could go up to 3K maybe at most, but usually between that, say 800 to two and a half K, that's where you're going to find harsh frequencies and harsh sounds for pretty much every microphone that I've ever tried. So, and I, I know with this microphone, I mean, because it's the same microphone that I use that these are the kind of spots where I've noticed, you know, problems with my recordings. Now, point number three here, it's a little lower. It's around 425 hertz. And that's kind of where some, some boominess lives. Uh, it's not quite like the, the bass boomy, uh, but it just, it didn't sound good. And we wanted to drop that frequency out. Now, if it sounds a little thin, we can uh, use point number two to kind of bring up the bass a little bit, but let me listen to it. I'm going to move that point two up and down a little bit. We may not even need it because you don't want too much bass and dialogue because it's just going to make it sound muddy, but you might want a little bit. I mean, you, you don't want the voice to sound hollow. So let's listen in and see what we could do with point number two. And remember, you don't have to use all the points. Just use enough to kind of take care of the problem areas. That's all you're trying to do is take care of problems. And that in turn is going to help clean up your audio. When it comes to the all Indian operative, two Indian operated distances, they remain unchanged from dry runway. You may think right now, well, if I have a wet or contaminated runway where I have snow or slush, and surely that's going to change the distances for takeoff. Not exactly. What changes is the amount of weight you can take off with given those contaminated conditions. All right, I think that's pretty good. We did a slight boost. I mean, just a little bit. Uh, it's really hard to tell. I think it helps just a little bit. Now, I'm going to play through this one more time. I'm going to turn the EQ off to start, and then we're going to turn it on and see if we can hear a difference, see how it's sounded so far. So here we go. When it comes to the all Indian operative, two Indian operated distances, they remain unchanged from dry runway. You may think right now, well, if I have a wet or contaminated runway where I have snow or slush, and surely that's going to change the distances for takeoff. Wet or contaminated runway where I have snow or slush. 
All right, so I ended up turning off point two there or dropping it down just a little bit because I don't think it's helping anything. I think it kind of muddies it up a little. So I'm going to turn off that point two. We're going to actually just bring that base kind of back to where it was because we don't want it to be muddy. We want it to be crisp and clear. And I think the background noise did get cleaned up a little bit. We do hear that hiss or hum or whatever it might be. We have a effect that we're going to try to use to get rid of that when we get there. So we'll see if that'll work. But I think for now... This is probably good enough EQ to get started. Now, one thing to keep in mind is you want to try and make your environment the best that you can, right? And here in my studio, I've got uh, sound blankets all the way around me, right? So it's killing a lot of extra noise, extra sound. My microphone is very directional, coming only towards me. So your environment makes a big impact on your recording. Now, I don't know where the background noise is coming from in this particular recording, but I would check my environment, check my cables. It sounds like there's some kind of interference or something going on there. I would che I'd check all that stuff to make sure you don't have that so you don't have to try and clean it up because it's easier to just get it right the first time and only have to do minor work as opposed to having to get in here and really uh, work with, you know, all kinds of tools to try and get rid of some kind of background noise like that. So just something to keep in mind. Make sure your environment is as good as you can get it. So with the EQ kind of set here, I'm going to go ahead and close that down. And now we're going to jump into the dynamics. So dynamics right here, you want to double click on that. Now, the first thing that I like to do is I like to add a little bit of compression. So compression is going to help reduce the distance between the loud parts and the quiet parts. So it kind of brings the quiet parts up and it brings down the loud parts of the video a little bit. So it kind of balances it out. You can look at it that way. Everything, we're trying to balance everything. You don't want it to be all of a sudden you're listening and boom, it's so loud. It's blowing your ears off. But then you don't want it to be so quiet that you got to ride your volume on your your remote control there, right? You got to go. I got to go louder. I got to go quieter. I got to go louder, quieter. You don't want to have to do that. So compression is going to help take care of that for you and kind of even things out and reduce the dynamic range of your audio. So let's turn it on here. I'm not going to go through every single thing here. I'm just going to make some uh, some adjustments. Uh, I'm going to probably drop my threshold back a little bit. And I'm going to use the makeup here to boost the quieter part. So let's just listen. We're going to play through it. And I'm going to adjust the compressor here and see what we can do. When it comes to the all Indian operative, two Indian. Now, I'm also watching my levels over here to use the makeup to get back around that minus 10 dB. And I'm adjusting my threshold down a little bit, as well as my ratio for my compression. We don't want to go too crazy. I usually do either two to one or you can go up as much as maybe three to one. For dialogue, you really probably don't want to go more than three to one. But, you know, use it on your clip. You, you decide what sounds best on your clip. When it comes to the all Indian operative, two Indian operated distances, they remain unchanged from dry runway. You may think right now, well, if I have a wet or contaminated runway where I have snow or slush, and surely that's gonna change the distances for takeoff. Okay, now you notice what I did there is I kind of set my compressor. And then I came over and I used my expander. Now, the expander helped get rid of some of that noise in between the words that he's saying there. And it kind of helps take care of some of that static in there. Now, is it a perfectly smooth transition? No. So we can play with the attack hold and release a little bit to smoothen that out a little bit. But it's going to help with some of that background noise that happens in between where the voice is. I hope that makes sense to you. So if you're looking at your, you know, your, your graph over here, for example, we'll get that out of there. In between where he's talking, that's where the expander is going to help take care of that. Now, you can also use a gate. A gate can make more of a hard cut at a certain uh, decibel level, whereas the uh, expander just kind of drops it down a little bit. So those two, uh, you know, you can choose between there what you want to use. I do have full videos on all this stuff that I can link to. I'll actually put a link up of here. You can check that out. That goes in-depth with all the knobs, buttons, dials, everything on here that you could take a look at. So if you're interested in the, the, the how, the why, what the buttons mean, you could check out those videos. But for now, I'm just going to tweak this a little bit more, and then we're going to move on to the next step. <laughs> So I made a few adjustments there. I think I'm happy with that. Is it perfect? No. Ideally, you get a better recording to start with, but we're doing the best we can here quickly with what we've got. So I'm going to go ahead and close my dynamics. And next, we want to take a look at some of the effects. One other thing I forgot to mention, and this is my bad right here, check out the order right here for our audio. By default, it's set on effects, dynamics, and then EQ. And we actually want to change that. The way I like to do it is to have the EQ 
then the dynamics, then the effects come in. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. And it will change the way your audio sounds because it's changing the routing of how it's getting processed. Now, I'm not saying my way is 100% right. It's the only way to do it. They give you options because you can do it different ways. And it depends on how you like your audio, how you want it to sound, and the things you're trying to do to it. So you might want to change it or leave it at the default. That's up to you, but this is just how I like to do it. All right, so let's listen to it one more time here and let's figure out what are the other problem areas that maybe we can use some effects to help fix. There's definitely that background, static, noise, whatever. We're going to try and fix that, but let's listen and see what else we might hear. In operated distances, they remain unchanged from dry runway. You may think right now, well, if I have a wet or contaminated runway where I have. All right, so first let's see if we can get rid of that hum. I don't know if it's gonna work, but there is an effect we can try. If we go to effects and then we come down to restoration and then we go Fairlight effects, there is a D hummer. Now, I don't know if this is gonna work. We're gonna try it. So I believe there are, yes, two presets of 50 Hertz and a 60 Hertz. So let's try this one first, 60 Hertz and see if it does anything. I don't know if it will. Let's try it out and see what happens. Engine operative, two engine operated distances. They remain unchanged from dry runway. Engine operated distances. They remain unchanged from dry runway. All right, so unfortunately, it didn't do anything. A lot of times this will affect and fix electrical hum and electrical noise that you might hear, interference, that kind of thing. It didn't work here, so I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of it and delete it off of our uh, effects here. So the next thing that I like to add is a multiband compressor just to kind of help compress the different frequency ranges. So to get there, we're going to go ahead, effects, hit the plus, come down to dynamics, fairlight effects, and multiband compressor. Now let's just play through with the default settings here and see how it sounds. I'm going to start with it off, then turn it on. Let's see what we got. When it comes to the all engine operative, two engine operated distances, they remain unchanged from dry runway. You may think right now, well, if I have a wet or contaminated runway where I have snow or slush, and surely that's going to change the distances for takeoff. Not exactly. What changes is the amount of weight you can take off with given those contaminated conditions. When it comes to the all engine operative, two engine operated distances, they remain unchanged from dry runway. Okay, so I think the multiband compressor here does do a pretty good job. You notice I did update some of the default settings there. I did kind of change where the low, mid, and high uh, uh, separations were. I moved the high up a little bit. I moved the mid up a little bit as well as the low. And I think you can hear the difference there. I think it kind of cleans it up a little bit more. We still have a de we're going to apply. Uh, but let's listen in and see how it sounds. comes to the all-engine operative, two-engine operative. Okay, and there's with it. When it comes to the all engine operative, two engine operated distances. So I think I'm happy with that. I think the multiband compressor does a good job of compressing some of our lower end frequencies, um, as well as we're bringing down the high end frequencies a little bit where there's some of that, you know, harsh S sound. So I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to go ahead and apply a de -esser. Going to hit the plus sign, and I'm going to come down to Restoration, Fairlight Effects, and de -esser. Now, we can use a preset here. I'm going to go ahead and click the little drop down. We've got Mail, ESS, Mail, S. -s, -s. <laughs> All right, so let's see how this does. I'm going to turn it off and then turn it on as we're playing. To the all engine operative, two engine operated distances, they remain unchanged from dry runway. To the... When it comes to the... And if you want to listen to the E, the it's S sounds only, we're going to check on this and just see how this sounds. Right now, well, if I have a wet or contaminated runway where I have snow or slush, and surely that's going to change the distances. And changing it back. Slush, and surely that's going to change the distances. When it comes to the all engine operative, two engine operated distances. They... Okay, so we can see that the de is working pretty good there. I do like the way it sounds with the wider curve here, so I'm going to stick with that. And that's going to be it. I'm going to go ahead and close this up. And now let's listen to the full clip here with no processing, nothing done. And then it's going to go straight into our process audio. I'll put it down on the bottom of the screen, which one is which. And uh, let's just see how it sounds. Hopefully, we made it sound better. When it comes to the all-engine operative, two-engine operated distances, 
they remain unchanged from dry runway. When it comes to the all engine operative, two engine operated distances, they remain unchanged from dry runway. So I think we did make a good improvement here on our audio clip. It, the biggest issue here is that background noise. It's really distracting. It, it's it, it breaks up the audio a lot, especially with headphones on. It's very noticeable. Uh, I noticed when I listened on my studio monitors here, it was less noticeable, so it wasn't as bad. And probably on laptop speakers, it's even you know less less of a problem there. But on headphones, it's very noticeable and it's distracting. Now we're gonna jump back into Fairlight and try the built-in noise reduction. Usually I don't use it because it doesn't work good. And then we're also gonna try a noise reduction plugin from Waves who has some awesome plugins here for DaVinci Resolve. You may have seen my video on the Clarity VX. It's not that one. We're actually going to try a different plugin that runs natively right here in Resolve that does a fantastic job as well. So let's jump back in Resolve, get into Fairlight, and try the built-in noise reduction and see how that does. So back into Fairlight here. Let's go ahead and click on the plus. We are going to come down to Restoration, Fairlight Effects, and Noise Reduction. Now, first, I'm just going to try the auto speech mode, and let's see what happens. Oh, actually, before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my, uh, in my dynamics here, I'm going to turn off my expander because that's limiting the background noise. So now it's just no background noise is getting eliminated or anything like that. So let's just play through. You can see what it sounds like without the uh, expander on there. Here's what it sounds like. When it comes to the all engine operative, two engine operated distances, Okay, so very distracting. Now, if I turn on the noise reduction, I'm just going to use auto speech mode. Everything else is at the default. Let's see how it does. When it comes to the all engine operative, two engine operated distances, they remain unchanged from dry runway. All right, so it does help there. The only thing I don't like about this tool is a lot of times, if it does work, it makes the audio sound very like tinny, like very high end, like you're almost like you're in a tin can. That's one of the problems with this uh, built in noise reduction. Now we can try the manual mode and let it learn. In order to do that, you want to click manual here. Then you want to come back to your audio clip and we need a space where there's no, uh, no speaking, where we've just got the background noise. I'm going to hit learn and I'm going to only play that part with the background noise. All right, so now that it's learned it, we can go back, listen, see how that worked. When it comes to the all engine operative, two engine operated distances, they remain unchanged. Okay, so, I mean, it's okay. It's, uh, I don't know that it's any better than the auto speech mode, but it still doesn't work great in my opinion. So generally, I'm not going to use the built-in noise reduction unless I absolutely have to to really try and save something. And even then, it's probably still not going to be great. So let's go ahead and remove this uh, default noise reduction. We're going to get rid of that. And now we're going to add in that Waves plugin. This is the NS1 noise reduction plugin. So again, I'm going to come to Effects. I'm going to come down to Restoration, VST, and all the way down here, I've got NS1 Stereo. Now this is the NS1 noise suppressor from Waves. Very basic, I'm just gonna grab this slider and bring it up to get rid of that background noise. Let's see how well that this does uh, on our clip here. So I'm gonna play through and uh, raise this guy up, see what we got. When it comes to the all engine operative, two engine operated distances, they remain unchanged from dry runway. You may think right now, well, if I have a wet or contaminated runway where I have snow or slush and surely that's going to change the distances for takeoff. Not exactly. What changes is the amount of weight you can take off with given those contaminated conditions. So right there, 100% better job at removing that background noise than the built-in noise reduction. So again, this is the Waves NS1. I'll link it in the description below if you want to go check it out. But the Waves plugins do a fan fantastic job. I mean, audio is what they do primarily for music, but it works for video editing too. And they do a great job. Now, if you did see my Waves Clarity VX plugin, you know that Resolve has to run in Rosetta to run that Clarity plugin. But this one, the NS1, runs natively. You could just load it up in Resolve and you're good to go. But another disclaimer about the Wave stuff is that DaVinci Resolve is not officially supported by Waves. However, it works fine on Windows, works fine on Mac. I've had no issues. A lot of people have great success with it. I think they're fantastic plugins. There's a couple of them, like I said, that need to run in Rosetta, but the majority of them run natively on Mac uh, here. So just putting that out there uh, in case you guys were wondering, or if you have problems and you reach out to Wave Support and they say, hey, we don't support Resolve, technically 
They don't, but it does work, and uh, people have had great success with them. So that wraps up this episode of I Edit Your Audio. Guys, if you want to submit a file for me to take a look at, there's a link in the description below to a Google form. You can go and submit your stuff over there. And I'm going to try and do some more of these because I think it's helpful for you guys to just see how I would edit your audio or just watch somebody go through and edit your particular clip. And if you do submit your file, I'm going to send you back a DaVinci Resolve file with all the changes in it that I made so you can see what I did, and then you can get in there and play with it and tweak things based on my my settings and then change it to however you might like it or you can even save it as a preset too so that way the next time you make a video you just hit that preset and boom you're good to go so that wraps up this one guys thank you so much for watching and i look forward to seeing you in the next episode peace